I like this team. I do. And on the day of the opening of the 56th NHL season in Pittsburgh, I'm prepared to state right here unequivocally that I believe they'll contend. Good morning to you. Good Thursday morning. I'm Dan Kovacevic of DK Pittsburgh Sports, and this is finally a relevant episode of Daily Shot of Penguins. Comes your way bright and early every weekday if you're into football and or baseball. I also offer Daily Shots of Steelers and Pirates where you found this. But tonight at 7.08 p.m. inside PPG Paints Arena, it will be Penguins versus Coyotes, and it is exciting the whole thing always has been i'm going back to childhood here at the civic arena there's nothing like having the players called out by number with the spotlight as they come out of the runway and they tap everybody else on the pet shin pads and get into the circle it's 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 hockey season these are things that are unique to hockey It's beautiful. It's awesome that it's here. It's awesome that we're all back to really, really close to normalcy. And I got to tell you, it'll be that much better as the winter goes along. And this team shows again, as it has the past couple, that it's still got it. Now, before anybody gets all super cynical and starts bringing up the recent playoff failures, I will remind that the recent playoff failures came as the result of goaltending. Goaltending and goaltending. And this is not something that anyone should be anticipating this year, barring injury, which, of course, with this franchise, one can never rule out. It's a good team. Front to back, it's a good team. Everyone seems to focus on the age of Sidney Crosby, of Evgeny Malkin, and Chris Letang. The fact of the matter is the Penguins still have Sidney Crosby, Evgeny Malkin, and Chris Letang. Don't lose sight of that. Don't lose sight of what they still can do at really reasonable cap hits. Don't lose sight of that. The number of teams in the NHL that would gleefully ecstatically take any of these three players at the cap hit that the Penguins are paying is exactly 32. There are no exceptions to this. Not one. Pittsburgh is fortunate to have them. The day that you start looking at having Sid, Gino, and Tanger on your team as a bad thing is the day to find something else to do with your life. In the colder months around here. Add to that three, at least three, bona fide top six wingers. Again, guys who would be six wingers pretty much anywhere in Jake Gensel, Brian Rust, and I believe Ricard Raquel. On a lot of teams in this league, Gensel would be their star. Remember that too. Don't let that one slip away just because Jake's been around is kind of a supporting cast type, happy to be helping. He's riding alongside with Sid kind of guy. That's not the reality. The reality is that Jake is now regularly this team's leading goal scorer, and he will be again this season, whether he tops 40 again or not. Good, good team. This portion of Daily Shot of Penguins is brought to you by the good people at the Greater Pittsburgh Community Food Bank, where they're committed to providing food for all of our neighbors in need across western Pennsylvania. They, in turn, need your help. Find out how one dollar can be turned into five full meals for those in need. Visit pittsburghfoodbank.org. The blue line's a bit of a different situation, but here again, I want to ask you this. Because everyone talks about, you know, the age and this and that and everything else. And Latang is in that conversation. How would this defensive core look to you without Latang? And please don't throw some BS my way about how, oh, they could have gotten this guy or that guy. You know who was available is John Klingberg. You want Klingberg to be your number one defenseman? If so, watch him regularly. 
Watch what he does on a night-to-night basis in Dallas over the past few years. He'll skate elegantly, but he doesn't get a whole lot done. Latang is all that, and he's back, and it's at a reasonable cap hit. And, by the way, he had this amazing thing to say after practice yesterday at PPG Paints Arena when this whole core subject came up. We know we can win. We, we have the recipe, and uh, that's what we want to do again. And, um, and that, that's all that matters. It's not uh, breaking records. It's, it's about winning. I'll say it again. The defense is a work in progress. It just is. You don't know what you're going to get out of Jeff Petrie. I like him a lot, but again, you don't know. He's 34 years old. I'm looking forward to seeing Ty Smith back here. I have no idea what to expect from this stage of Brian Dumoulin. But I like the overall constitution of the group, and I like a lot that they brought in guys who, A, make better breakout passes, and B, are at least a little bit more adept at clearing the front of the net including also, obviously, Jan Ruta, who's been in the past three Stanley Cup finals and won two of them. Then from there, you just go to Tristan Jari, who has shown himself to be, not guesswork on my part, not an opinion, one of the NHL's top five, six goaltenders statistically over the past two seasons. Two playoffs ago, He ran into a mental meltdown. It has happened to almost every goaltender at every level. It happened to him. He turned it into something that would make him stronger. That's to his credit. That's not a blemish. That's a bright spot in its own way because he bounced back right away. Not just mentally, he became a better physical, technical goaltender. And then, of course, in these past playoffs, he wasn't available until Game 7 when he went out there with what he's now acknowledged was a completely broken foot. Completely broken foot into a Game 7. And performed pretty well. And might even have gotten the team through that. After which, by the way, I don't know if you know this or not, he wouldn't have been available to start the next series. That was a concession the Penguins were willing to make just to try to get through. And that he, more important, was willing to make. He is the least of my concerns. Good, good hockey team. Enjoy the start of hockey season. When we come back, J1Q. from Braden Pavlik, who asks, did the Penguins do enough this summer to get out of the first round? I feel it's basically the same team with hopefully a healthy Jari. But I'm worried that they might have too much of a focus on that consecutive playoff streak rather than getting the guys to go deep. Um, Braden, I have no idea where you get the last thing from. But every once in a while, a subject comes up so often in public that Fans will conflate it with a sentiment that's inside an organization. I'm going to give you an example uh, from the football side of things. I hear a ton from Steelers fans about how uh, Mike Tomlin is worried about his streak of never having had a losing season. There's no one, no one within the walls at the Steelers complex who ever brings this up. And Tomlin would be the least to do this. He doesn't see his life as having existed before the previous Sunday or existing going forward past the next Sunday. That's just how he lives. But people hear this often enough and they think, oh, this is a big thing for the Steelers. It's not. It's something other people talk about. The Penguins, I've never heard anybody, I mean anybody, talk about the consecutive playoff streak. It's nice. I mean, I'm sure after Sid's done that he and Gino and Latang will all be able to, you know, take some pride in that. You know, that the entire time they were in Pittsburgh, they made the playoffs and uh, they had an active streak that was longer than anybody else's, one of the longest in the league's history. But to think that that's the premise for which they're building their roster is a great big wow no from me, Braden. Uh, do they have the people? 
which I think also was part of your question, to get deep. They've certainly found a way to use their extremely limited cap space to pile up bodies. That's probably the best answer I can give you on that. Uh, When I look at, for example, the fourth line, and I see Ryan Paling is going to center in all likelihood tonight between Josh Archibald and Brock McGinn, and that doesn't get me all that excited. I know Teddy Bluger is going to come back sooner rather than later from his injury. And then I also know that there's in Wilkes-Barre, Scranton, Sam Poulin, Valtteri Pustinen, Drew O'Connor, guys who can come up and maybe change the complexion of the bottom six as the season were to go along. And it would have been easy, arguably lazy, for Ron Hextall to have taken the approach that I would have, okay, which is why I'm not a GM, I would have found 12 guys that I really like and said to heck with all the rest. They didn't do that. Archibald might be the best example of that. He's not somebody that anybody's going to talk about up until the Penguins have a five for five night on the PK. He's a really, really good, smart penalty killer who's capable of being a threat when he's shorthanded. And he just does a lot of different things well, and somehow, some way, he ends up, most seasons, with double-digit goals. That's okay to have on your team. McGinn, for whatever reason, falls off a cliff seemingly every year in the second half. That's not something that was unique to last season. That happened to him in Carolina, too. Well, when that happens, and you'll recall the Penguins had some really tough stretches last regular season when it came to scoring and getting supplementary scoring, this can be a solution to that. You can bring up someone from Wilkes-Barre. You can plug in an Archibald or whoever and make things happen. So that part of it, again, going to your question, is going to address making a deeper run because you need a lot of guys, including a lot of guys who aren't necessarily in that night's lineup. The same obviously applies to the blue line. I've virtually been making fun of them for months now for all the NHL defensemen that they signed and kept aboard. But you know what? Even if you don't like, as I didn't like, Ty Smith being sent back to Wilkes-Barre, he was sent down because just a technicality. Just because he could go down without having to clear waivers. He would have been lost in waivers. So that was maintained as an asset to help them go deeper and possibly, I think, to get stronger once Smith comes up here and is better than someone who's currently here. What's left is the goaltending. But, you know, to an extent, to bring up another football parallel here, if you lose your starting quarterback in the NFL playoffs, you're hosed. Okay? You're just hosed. Part of winning a championship, part of winning the Stanley Cup, is having a goaltender who can make it the whole way for you. Extremely rare are the settings like the one in 2017 where the Penguins were just carrying around Matt Murray and Marc-Andre Fleury and could just go back and forth as they needed. That's not the norm. That's not how it works across hockey. So Casey DeSmith was arguably the best available backup that was out there, certainly the best available who'd fit within the Penguins' cap structure, and they brought him back, and, you know, we'll see where it goes. But ultimately, all of this still comes down to Jari being his best self and staying healthy. Not to oversimplify an entire hockey season, but that's really it. I appreciate the question, Braden. I appreciate everyone listening to Daily Shot of Penguins. Again, have a wonderful night over at PPG Paints Arena. I'll see you over there. It is indeed a great day for hockey.